you got you got a younger sibling, you know what I'm saying? And like you you get around your friends, but you don't want your little brother there, you know what I'm saying? Cuz they they young, you know what I'm saying? So so just kind of keep them off to the side. I feel like some some artists have treated the church in that way. Um, almost embarrassed of the church. Um, and you really see it in in mainstream interviews. Like whenever the church comes up, I've noticed that it's never in a positive light, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's always, yeah, the, that, that music is corny, that their, their approach is heavy-handed, da-da-da-da. Let's get the people what they want. The Wado Radio Show. It's DJ Wado. It's the Wado Radio Show. It's more than music. It's ministry. We are live at Ja Rockin' with my brother. For the first time, we are ever doing an interview, man. Y'all don't know how excited I am about this, man. Shylan is here with us, man. What's up, bro? What's good, Wado? Hey, man. It's good to have you in Brooklyn, my brother. It's been a long time coming, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, brother. Yeah, man. You, um, you've had a busy past couple of years. Mm. Um, it seems like every time I see you, something's changed in your life. Right, right. Marriage, right. children, church planting, <laughs> album. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, it's been a lot going on, man. Yeah, man. So what's cooking, bro? Chilling, man. Chilling. Yeah, we got the got the new album about to drop. Yeah, um, still Jesus. So. Still Jesus. Yeah, we're excited about that. Um, the church plant in Philly, Risen Christ Fellowship. That's been going really well. Uh, we're yeah. almost almost two years in now with that. Nice. Um, and Has it been that long, bro? Yeah, yeah. Coming up wow. in two years. Yeah. Um, wow. And then me and my wife, we just celebrated our seventh uh, anniversary. Look at God, man. Yeah, Look at yeah. That, Praise bro. the Lord, yo. Look and then we that. got three kids, and so yeah, life has been busy, but it's been good. Hey, y'all not playing three kids? Y'all moving, bro? Uh, hey, <laughs> hey, brother. It's that fruitful multiplication. You know what I mean? <laughs> no doubt. Hey, so let's let's talk about still Jesus first, man. The, just the, just the title, man, and and. Um, um, you know, man, what 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 were you what what was on the mind? You know, in making yeah, yeah. this project. Well, so so those who are familiar with my music know that my first album was the Soulless Christus Project, yep. Yep. which means Christ Alone, yep. right? Um, and really, the heart behind Still Jesus is that you know my last project dropped in 2014, so yeah. it's been about three years, which is an eternity. You know what I'm saying in terms of the music industry and so but you're usually like three I, I was i was i was looking at that bro i was like he's usually like three years that's like true, that's you true. know yeah 2011 right. you had stories to Facts. 20 you know what I mean? no so, doubt no doubt yeah. yeah but i think i think the the changes in the industry yeah have moved so much more yeah. quickly you know what yeah. i'm saying um and yeah. so so I was just like, man, I'm, I'm originally I was going to drop uh, lyrical theology part three, sociology. Right. So that's you know what I'm saying right. that that was on the on the on the docket. But uh, since since things had, sh- had kind of changed so much over the last three years, I was like, you know what? Let me let me come back and make an album that's just bas- basically planting my flag in the ground. Like there's been a lot of changes, there's been a lot of changes in the world, a lot yep. of changes in the church, a lot of changes yep. in Christian hip hop. Yep. At the end of the day, it's still all about Jesus because Jesus hasn't changed, and so that's that's kind of what it's about. Yeah, I. I, I like I felt that vibe from the first song of the album mm-hmm. right away, yeah. you know, and that yeah. was like the perfect intro. Mm. I feel like to you know what I mean. Like what, what were you going to address on the rest of the album? And um, I, I think too, man, you know, particularly for our audience, um, I, I feel like on this project you had a you got a serious charge to Christian hip hop. Yes, sir. You know what I mean. Yes, sir. And um, man, just talk about that a bit because you you know you talk about the shift. Um, you even mentioned. You know, um, you know, Reach Records, yeah. 2012. That you know, a lot of lot of things happening since then, man. So just, yeah. just your thoughts on that situation right now, man. Yeah, man. Um, yeah. So the song you're talking about is Random Thoughts yep. Three, yep. Um, and yeah, I just I, I mentioned, and I'm I basically I'm basically walking through my my interaction with Christian hip hop when yeah. I first got in back in 2000, 2001, 2002, say, yeah. back in the Rock Soul yep, days, yep, you know what I mean? Yep, yep. Um, and One I, of the first albums I ever bought was that Rock Soul compilation. Wow. Which I was talking to Corey Red about this the other day, bro. Oh, I was, Corey I was actually, Red. I was actually trying to get him to come today, bro. Oh, Red. <laughs> I was trying to get him to come Red today. Red is that dude. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. We couldn't get the schedules, but okay. that was like... Uh-huh. We we got in around the same time, and yes, sir. you know I, that that project always has a special place in my heart. Mm, man, word, you know? man. And so yeah, so just basically, you know, we we lived through what, what many would consider the golden era of Christian hip hop. You know what I'm saying? When you know when CM had dropped, and yep. then Lamp Mode dropped, yep. and then Reach Records dropped, yep. and it was just like just kind of one after the other. Yep. Cats just dropping Christ Center gospel proclaiming. Yeah. It's more than music; it's ministry hey, type albums. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, and and it was dope. But you know what, what I mentioned in the song is that in around 2012, 
it was just a shift. You know what I'm saying? It was a it was a shift away from uh, Christ centered, clear, explicit gospel proclamation uh, to to doing more. Uh, was I guess what some would call life, kind of practical issues of life type music. And it's not to knock that. There's definitely a place for that. Um, but over time, what it what seems like began to happen is that. Um, it was not only was there a move away from Christ-centeredness, but it was also uh, kind of like not only are we going to move away from it, but that's actually corny. Mm. <laughs> so, so that, that's not even the right way to do it. That's not the right way to go wow. about it. Um, and so many of us was like, well, wait, wait, hold up. Yeah, <laughs> wait, yeah. how, how do we get to this point? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, and, and it's basically continued. And, and one of the things that I found really interesting recently has been how religious secular music has become. It's crazy, bro. Ain't, ain't that crazy? It's crazy. So it's, it's, it's crazy when you think about it, bro. Bruh, it's bruh. crazy. It's, it's like any any recent, current, secular album, hip-hop album you throw on, it's God all over it. People yeah. talking about God, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Wrong conceptions of God, but yep. they're talking about God nonetheless. In some way. In some way. In some way, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Um, while at the same time, Christian hip-hop seems like it's talking less and less about God, while secular hip-hop is talking more and more about God. And so what's happened is there's become a gap. And, and if we're not going to fill in the gap, if we're not going to speak the truth about who the true God is and what he requires from his word... Satan's always going to be there, standing there, ready to fill in that space, and that's what's been happening. That face has been that that space has been being filled in, and so um, so that's some some of the things I talk about. Why do you think we've gotten away from that? I think I think there's a number of reasons for it. Um, so so one reason is in the eyes of the world, it just doesn't work, mm. right? So so the world would say. You gotta tone all that down. Like it's it's dope what you're doing. It may even be dope artistically, uh, but but to but to come with Jesus like that in your face is just it's just too much. It's too pe- people don't want to hear that. Um, and so I think I think some artists have just caved in to that pressure of like, okay, we want to be in these spaces, um, but they're not gonna let us in these spaces if if we keep coming with the same kind of heavy handed approach. And so let's let's tone it down so that we can get into into the room. But but getting into the room was never meant to be an end into its unto itself, sure. right? The whole purpose for getting into those spaces is so that we can hit cast with the gospel with the and gospel. let them know about about the hope yeah. that we have in Christ. And I think to be honest, I think I think finances play a part into it. You know what I'm saying? Um, not to judge the motives of any individual brother's heart, but um, but just knowing even just my own heart, right? Just the the reality of fame, of wealth, of popularity. Those things can be very. It can be very alluring, right? Um, and and it can be very comfortable to be in those spaces when it's like, man, I'm recognized. I'm recognized by the by the people I looked up to growing mm-hmm. up. They they're listening to my music now, and 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 they're listening to the toned down version of it. So I might as well keep it toned down. You know what I'm saying? The desire for respect. Um, and I think also um, low key. I think there's a uh, I think there's actually a despising of the church, man. Um, wow. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I think that there's a, a looking at the church as almost like, almost like my like my weaker little brother. You know what I'm saying? Like you know how you got you got a younger sibling. You know what I'm saying? And like you you get around your friends, but you don't want your little brother there. You know what I'm saying? Because they they young. You know what I'm saying? So so just kind of keep them off to the side. I feel like some some artists have treated the church in that way. Um, almost embarrassed of the church, um, and you really see it in in mainstream interviews. Like whenever the church comes up, I've noticed that it's never in a positive light. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's always yeah, the, that that music is corny. That their approach is heavy handed. Da 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 da. But I'm like, yo, in the Bible, the Bible talks about in Psalm 16, verse 3, the saints in the land in whom is all my delight. Like, these are my brothers, you know what I'm saying? And so in, I'm just seeing in interviews, like, like where's the defense and the standing up for the, yeah, I know there might be some cats taking a different approach, but yo, let me put you on, yo. Like, the church, like, this is, this is the family of God. This is the household of faith. Um, and I think that there's a, um, th- there's a, a despising of, all of the stuff that comes along with identifying with the Lord Jesus Christ, right? So I think about what it says about Moses in uh, in Hebrews. It says that it says that he he chose to be to identify to be mistreated with the people of God. And I, I tweeted about this the yeah, other day. Yeah. Rather than partake in the pleasures of sin, yeah. so there's a mistreatment. 
that can come along, that does come along with being identified with the people of God. And I think, I think there's just a temptation to, you know, I don't want that kind of mistreatment. I don't want that marginalization. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distance myself so, so that I don't have to have to go through that. So I think that plays a part as well. Do you think this is, do you think this is like sinful, this kind of behavior? And I ask because <clears throat> some people say, well, why does this matter? Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, why, like, why does this even matter? Like, you know, there's many different ways to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, th in some regards, like you look at, you know, maybe some of the stuff that Lecrae is doing. Mm -hmm. for, it's uncharted territory yeah. to a certain extent. Yeah. Um, but do you think it's, do you think it's sinful? Well, or do you think there's certain liberty that comes into play? I mean, you yeah, know. Yeah. So I think it depends on what we're talking about, right? Sure. So when so when you say there's a lot of ways to do this, it depends on what we're talking. What is this that we're talking about, right? So, so if we're saying there's there's a lot of ways to do art as a Christian, right? Uh, or as a Christian uh, in in hip hop. Amen. Yeah. Yes, there are many ways to do it. So. No, nobody is saying. I'm not saying like everybody got to do lyrical theology, right? And not not at all. Uh, so there's certainly a freedom in that in that regard. Um, but I think I think the question that we have to ask is not necessarily. So, so I'm I'm hesitant to just jump out and say, "Yo, it's sin." Sure, like sure, these sure, cats sure, are sure. in sin. Sure, um, sure. But one question. I, I think that's the wrong question. I think I think the question is, is it the best use of the platform, right? So some so something can be. Not necessarily sinful, but not necessarily the best, the best use, the of, best it. use of it. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm tr trying to, sure. trying to ha hammer at is, sure. um, you know, we, we're called to make the the best use of the time because the days are evil. Yeah. And I think, I think, wait, wait, oh, one of the things that we've lost track of is the reality of the emergency, mm. right? So, you know, cross moving back in the day, human emergency, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's like. It seems like we've just completely lost the emergency mindset. Sure. Like, bro, real talk. Like, people are going to hell every single day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the gospel needs to be proclaimed. the The wrath of God is coming, and it, it it seems like with success, we've lost that sense of urgency. And me, me and my man, we were just talking about it over lunch. Like, this this conversation is is a peacetime type of conversation. This, this is not a wartime conversation, you know right. what I'm saying? So, so having the luxury of having my art be this, like, they don't even have this discussion in persecuted, where, where Christians mm. are being, in countries where Christians are being persecuted, mm. right? It's like, wait, what are we talking about? Like, yeah. like we about to be killed for the faith. We, yeah. we, what do you mean? Like, amen, you got liberties, but um, I, I feel like we've lost sense of the emergency of it. Um, you know, the, the kind of conversation that you have over dinner is a different conversation that you have when your house is on fire. True. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <True>. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like true, the, the urgency of it yeah. is just, it's going to be it's different. different. You know it's what I'm different. saying? And I feel like we've lost that. Yeah. And, and I, I think along with urgency, there comes a certain passion. You know what I mean? Mm. And it's like, you can even say that's lost. Mm. You know what I mean? And, mm. and, a, and a lot of cases, man. Um, let me, let me, um, cause there's a, there's a, there's, this is the first time me and him have done one of these. <laughs> There's so much stuff that I want to, I want to, I want to get to. Um, you planted a church, man, and mm. I saw that coming. I knew you were gonna plant at some point, bro. I yeah. saw it when I, one of the first times I like met you, met you. I was like, this brother's gonna be a pastor at some mm. point, bro. Mm. Talk about that journey, because I know you, you did internships and, yeah. and all types of stuff, and um, you left Philly for a while, came back. So yeah. just, just talk about that journey to plant your church, bro. Yeah, man. Um, you know, it was. So, so back in the day, back in, you know, 04, 05, uh, I remember when Ambassador was, he was in Dallas uh, yep. doing se uh, seminary down there, and he was on his way back to Philly. Yep. Um, and, and at that time, the Lord had raised up just a number of just like-minded Christian hip-hop cats. And, and, one, and one of the challenges that we always came across was we would go out, we hit the streets, we evangelize, you know what I'm saying, and, and people come to faith, and it's like, okay, what church they gonna go to? Um, and 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 while there, there's de definitely good churches, one, one of the issues that we found was that um, in, in bringing brothers straight off the street into the church, um, there was this cultural disconnect. Yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, know, you know it well. Yep. Um, where yep. it's like I look around and culturally, I just don't see 
Um, I, they, they're talking about Jesus, and that's dope. But man, culturally, I just don't see where I fit in culturally. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And so, so the burden to plant was like, man, how dope would it be if if there was a church where cats could come, where they could get solid teaching, but they could look around and they could see people that they could identify with, sure. who, who were part, same part of the same uh, hip hop culture. And so, so that's what that was birthed out of. And so yeah, man, I did an internship in uh, 2000. I was involved. In the, well, well, I was gonna say you was a part of Epiphany. I was a part of Epiphany. A part right? of Epiphany. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So helped to plant Epiphany. Yep. Right. So that that was that was dope. Um, and a, a big part of the the vision of what we were looking to do. Um, and then in 2009. Um, so that was in 2006 when Epiphany was planted. And then in 2009, I went to D.C. Yeah. And, and did the internship. Lived down there for a while. Got married down there. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my wife, Blair. Without, <laughs> without love. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we just had our anniversary right there. All right, see my whole... My whole I got you. My whole Steve's just changed. But Hey, but, so if, 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 if next time we see Shah, he got four kids, you know what happened. <laughs> hey, you know, anniversary love. You know what I'm saying? But nah, um, yeah. So got married in D.C. Um, I served at a at a church down there, um, Delray Baptist Church, and w- with the goal of them sending me back to Philly wow. to plant along with uh, Brian Davis, and yep. we planted together. And so, um, so yeah, man, that that w- it was just birthed out of a desire for theology and culture to come together in a local assembly. Yeah, I remember, man. Y'all used to have these things at Epiphany called First Friday Fundamentals. Yes, sir. Even, that was even before Epiphany. That's right. But it, it, it was it was kind of a part of it. So, you know about First Fridays, hey, bro. I went to a couple <laughs> men on the low low. Okay. You know what I mean? On the low low. I, re- I remember. I actually went to one. I think Trip was leading it. You know mm, what I mean? Mm-hmm, um, that mm-hmm. that was at Epiphany. But yeah. I went. I, I I seem to remember. I went to one, but even before that. But uh-huh. you always like that merging of culture and theology has always. I mean, that's. That's 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 been you, bro. Absolutely. Lyrical theology, you. man. Yeah, that's yes, been sir. you, man. Yes, sir. That's been you. Um another thing. Um you and, and I thought this I thought this was interesting. You did a um was it GoFundMe campaign to kind of uh-huh. support what you were doing financially. And yeah, you yeah. you've written a lot um online just about streaming, yeah. the different business model and, and that kind of stuff. And one of the things that I thought was very real about just that whole campaign was you admit it i was a little nervous about doing this mm-hmm. why yeah because it's like it's it's uncharted territory yeah for me you know what i'm yeah. saying um yeah yeah it was it was just like all right about to take this take this step of faith you sure. know what i'm saying um to kind of re-enter re-engage with doing music again um and full-time and it was just like Okay. All right, Lord, I got to trust you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's something about getting that direct deposit every two weeks. You know what I'm bruh. saying? That's just bruh, like, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With benefits, you know yeah. what I'm saying? There's yep. so, something about that that's yep. like, I got to keep this, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But, um, but yeah, man, me and my wife just sensed that the Lord was, was, was leading me to, uh, to jump back full into music. And, and like I said, the game has changed, man. So yeah. streaming has just, it's completely changed the game. Yeah. So it's like, so artists now have to find a new way, new, new, yeah. new streams of income. You know what I'm saying? And so, so what I like about this, it's called Patreon. Um, can I just give a yeah, shout yeah, out to Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I said GoFundMe. Yeah, no, it's but all yeah, good. It's, but yeah. it's similar. But yeah, so pa- Patreon, Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com forward slash Shylin is my sure. page. And it's it's basically it's the opportunity for the the supporter or the fan to pay the artist directly. You know what I'm saying? So so if you really like something or you like someone, you like an artist, you're, you're willing to kick out money for it, right? Um, and but in the traditional forms, what it's been is I'll I'll go to the concert, so I'll pay the money for the yep. concert. I'll pay yep. for the merchandise, yep. or I'll yep. pay for the CD. For the right? CD, and that was the big one. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. But what's ha- what happens with that is that there's a middleman. So yeah. so you pay for the CD, and then that 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 whatever you pay goes through a whole bunch of hands. Yep. And by the time it gets to the the artist like is usually very little Miniscule, in most cases. Yeah, Minuscule, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And so with Patreon, although yeah, yeah, Letmo yeah. has some of the best record deals in the game, bro. Facts. Y'all had some of the best deals in the game. Indeed. It's just Indeed. nobody like buying CDs no more. Exactly. Bro. Exactly. So even for us, like it, so, so I was able to live off of CD sales sure. at a time when nobody was able to yeah. do it, just because we had a good arrangement at Lamp Mode. But even even with that now, it's just like streaming. It's just like completely, completely changed yeah. that even. You know what I'm saying? And so, so it's like, okay, what you can do is if you really support an artist, I can say, you know what? I'm going to pay the artist directly. Yep. And that way I can interact with you and you can let me in on what you're doing. And then, and that way, 
you know, I'm helping you to be able to put out what you what you want to put out. And so yeah. and that's basically what it is. And it's been it's been dope. It's basically a it's like a online a small community of supporters that we that we're able to encourage each other and yeah, so it's been dope. So speaking of community, I first heard you mention this on your on your Patreon page, but then I, I heard it several times on the album, mm-hmm. and it's the reference to the seven thousand. Your supporters, <laughs> who are the seven thousand, bro? Who, who who are the seven thousand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Word. <laughs> you did some research. Hey, bro, okay. I, I listen to your music, man. I listen, bro. No doubt. I'm paying no doubt. attention, man. That's dope. Yeah. So so back in the day, um, Lamp Mode, we did a um, a joint called Grassroots, like an underground uh, album that we gave away. Grassroots, I I yeah. That. But there's a line on there where I say, um, Grassroots by Lamp Mode, in Christ we trust. We looking for the seven thousand that's just like us. Wow! And and what that is, that's a that's a reference to uh, to Elijah, right? So it's Elijah in First Kings, uh, where he's on the run um, and from Jezebel, and basically he feels like he's all alone, right? He's just like, yo, I've I've been really real zealous for the Lord of Hosts, and they've killed all of your prophets, and I I'm the only this. one. And then he thought he was the only one. He thought he was the he only one. He thought he was the he only one. He thought he was the only one. Right, 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 right. But God was like, yo, I got 7,000 7, that haven't bowed the knee. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and so so we just picked up on that number, to, you know, the 7,000 to say, you know what? There's a there's a remnant. There's a group of people who have not sold out to the idols of, of fame and fortune and who, who desire the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ in raw, uncut form. And so we call our supporters. I call my supporters the 7,000. 7,000. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. You know, it's, it's interesting, man. There's been like books and all types of stuff written on like building your tribe and that kind of thing. Mm. And it was and, and, and it's really it's finding people who who, who kind of think like you mm. and 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 basically rallying those people together. Yeah. And and hearing you describe this, I'm like, yo, y'all was y'all was doing that <laughs> before it was yeah. like documented on, on how to do it is is finding people that. You know what I mean? Like-minded yeah. and, and, and all of that stuff. Man. Yeah, I, so. I, have, I have a saying that says that uh, a loyal few is better than a fickle multitude. Amen. You know what Amen. I'm saying? You, you get just a few loyal cats. So you think about the Lord Jesus, right? Like, at the end of the day, he had he had 12. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and all then, of them wasn't loyal. And, yeah. and, and, yeah. Right, all of yeah. them wasn't loyal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. they turned the world upside down. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So. Yep. No, that's good, bro. Gideon, too. Word, Gideon word, too. word. Gideon the too. Lord cut cut down the number with Gideon, right? Yeah, He's like, many. that's too many. Yeah. That's too, we got we got to cut it down yeah. so they got get the glory. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Look at that, bro. Look at that. Um, so I never got a chance to really talk to you about false teachers, bro. And mm. everything with that. And and mm. so the the interesting part about that is um David Daniels was working with me at the time mm. and he heard the song first. And he he did an article about it, right? Mm-hmm. John Piper retweets the article, mm-hmm. and then all these <laughs> Christian publications pick the article up, and it really it, it goes viral. And um, <laughs> there was a whole, you know, Paula White son replies, yeah. you reply. There was like a whole ecosystem of stuff that happened, man. Yeah. Um, and that was. Is I was crazy. I was looking. This was like three years ago, three four years ago. Yeah, twenty thirteen. Yeah, yeah twenty thirteen. Yeah. yeah. Um, man, just just talk about that that journey because I'm sure you still get at, we still get people every day that visit the website mm. for that article. Wow. Still you know, today. Still, still to this day. Still wow. finding it. Wow. Yeah. Still finding it, bro. Wow. Um, hmm. but just just you know just just talk about you know just you know maybe some of the stories you got from that. I'm I'm sure. You got all types of people that have, <laughs> you know, all types of stuff. Bro. Yeah, 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 bro. That was that was a crazy time, man. So, so when that when that record dropped, I was at the. I was first. The, what brought it on? We okay, should, yeah, so yeah, we yeah, probably yeah. start there. Okay, yeah. We should we should start there. All right, so you've wh- never you've never shot away from keeping it a hundred. You was oh yeah, you yeah, was yeah, keeping yeah. it a hundred before keeping it a hundred was like the thing. No, no doubt, no <laughs> doubt, no doubt. So, so my my very first appearance, like. On wax <laughs> with sixteen bars <laughs> from know. Rock Soul. Yeah, right. You money hungry preachers <laughs> right. better check yourself. Right. Like, like that right. was the first thing right. that cats heard from me. You right. know what I'm saying? So, so that's always been uh, a passion. Um, you know, and it, it's, it's 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 it stems from love towards the people of God, love towards the true sheep of God who are being led astray. And and so so it was it was never an issue for me to talk about 
false doctrine, sound theology, that kind of thing. Um, but by 2013, it had been years since I had addressed it. Um, and what, what brought it on again as I was working on Lyrical Theology Part 1 was I was getting a lot of correspondence from people from around the world, particularly in Africa. Um, so I, I, I remember a few emails that I got from Africa from, from missionaries who were in Africa saying, brother, this teaching is completely ripping the church apart wow. in, in these countries, in wow. these countries with people who are poor. Now, we think about what poor is in America. Mm. Not even close. It's, it's not, yeah, even, it's not even close. It's, it's, you're, talking, you're talking completely different levels yeah. of poverty. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so... So to have I've been to Ghana a couple times, bro. It's, yeah, yeah. It, it, it'll blow your mind. Yeah, it's crazy. Some of the stuff you say. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, um, I've, I've been I've been to South Africa, um, and and it, in, in certain parts, it's just it's unbelievable. You can't even in, from an American mind state, it's unfathomable um, to some of the, some of their conditions. And but yet at the same time, amidst this deep poverty, you have these people from America, preachers coming across. It's being exported that all you got to do is have enough faith. And if you're not rich and if you're not healthy, it's because your faith isn't big enough. And that's that's from the pit of hell, bro. That's mm. from the pit of hell. And and so 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 getting that correspondence from uh, from brothers and sisters in Africa, it was like, you know what, let me I'm working on this album. Let's talk about false teachers and let's be specific about it, because because yeah. everybody can say, OK, false teachers, it's in the Bible. But then. Who are we talking who are, about? Who right? are we talking Because a lot of times, like we'll, we'll act like false yeah. false teachers is a category, but then like it doesn't apply to anybody yeah. who's actual. You know what yeah, I'm saying? And so, that. so that's so that's that's why I name names. I think biblically, there's a there's a place for that. And um, and so 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 years later, I don't I don't regret doing the song. Uh, there's been a lot of good fruit that's come from the song. Um, I don't even have the time to get into all of that. But 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 at the time that it dropped, I was at the Gospel Coalition conference um, and. For whatever reason, I knew it was going to cause a stir, but I didn't know it was going to cause the kind of stir that it, that it caused. You know what I'm saying? And so, so I came out of this conference, um, this session, and my phone, but like my notifications was like going crazy. Like it's like jackpot. You know what I'm yeah, saying? It's like, yeah. yo, what, <laughs> what in the world? And then I, I got like just all kinds of people saying, just talking reckless, saying crazy stuff. Like, I hope you die in poverty. You know what I'm saying? Like, like stuff like, well, you know, social media, wow. cats feel like they can just say, they say, say anything. anything. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And yeah. so, so I, I was like, and then people was coming up to me. I was in a crowded hallway and people was like, yo, you, I heard the song. And I was just like, I'm the type of dude, I'm, I'm more of a kind of behind the scenes type of dude, just naturally, my personality, I'm more of an introvert. And it was just over what my phone's blowing up, people coming up to me. I was like, all right, let me get up to the hotel room. And then as I got up to the hotel room, I saw that that Piper had had tweeted about it, and it was just like it was just overwhelming. That's and when it. That's when it. That's what. That was like the critical mass. Bro. Right, 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 right. Was that because I had to go back and figure out what happened? Right. Because right. our website couldn't even handle all the traffic at Word. the time. I had to upgrade servers. Wow. Yeah, I had to upgrade servers. Wow. And. Like I'm getting all this like Christian post and you know all it like all of this stuff and then mm. it was like where is this like where is it so like, I started you... I started going back and then it was like Piper tweeted it that's right and yeah. that you that know just... what I mean that yeah that was, especially that was at that time bro. yeah it's crazy yeah it, it's it's it was insane bro um but let me let me say this about yeah. that because. And thank you. Thank you for just allowing me to use the, your website to have that conversation with Brad Knight, um, because I feel like that was what the point of the song was in, yeah. in one sense, was to be yeah. able to to move from the medium of hip hop, which is limited, yeah. to go to, OK, let's get into the actual teachings and, yeah. and what's problematic about it. And me and me and Brad, we actually had a chance to dialogue after that oh, that's per, personally via email. That's so, great. Yeah, that's great, so it's a good, good conversation with him. Yeah. Did any of those other pastors and any people from their ministries reach out to you in a in a not in a uh like i'm I'm sure you got some like hate mail or whatever yeah but just in a way of like more dialogue types like genuine nope. dialogue no nope, not at all wow not at all wow and i'm i know it got around yes, I, I, that i know for a fact yeah yeah well i, I, th I think a lot of them they're, they're used to having people criticize yeah. their ministry so for them yeah. it's just like it's whatever just water under the bridge yeah yeah that's crazy that's crazy um I I want to um this was another song that kind of came out 
around that time, and it was same team, right? And oh, right. there was that was probably one of the few instances of you know people trying to promote unity within the space, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I would love to kind of get your your thoughts on just unity and Christian hip hop, and not even particularly in that song because that's you know, yeah. but just you know in the scene. Particularly yeah. right now, yeah, because yeah, yeah. because of this shift yeah. that we've had in Christian hip hop and, and and all of that. Yeah. So so biblically, u- unity is something that we are called to strive for. Yeah. Right. Um, Ephesians four, the you know strive for the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Um, and so so we unity is commanded, right? It's not it's not really optional. Yeah. Um, at the same time there can only be true unity if it's based on truth, yep. right? So, yep. Yep. Um, so yep. un- unity based on falsehood is, is not unity. It's not true unity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I think about, the, I think about the, the Tower of Babel, for instance, right? So they were, they were unified, right? They were like, yo, let's make a name for ourselves. Right. So they, they, they rallied around making a name for themselves, and they built the tower, and then God came and struck them down, right? So... So their unity wasn't was wasn't promoting the glory of God, um, and uh, and and I think that it's important for for those who recognize that there is an issue, right? Um, and so so these conversations, these are the kinds of conversations that we've had for years, right? Right. right. Um, every, so this is the thing: everywhere I go, wherever I travel. The first question out of people's mouths is, what's going on with Lecrae? Wow. What's going on with Reach wow. Records? What's wow. going on with Christian hip hop? Wow. I'm confused. Wow. I don't understand. Can you shed some light on this? Literally, bruh, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere I go, right? And I've taken the the tact of you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna deal with these issues behind closed doors. I was gonna say you've never really spoken publicly about nope, it uh-uh. for the most part. No, for the most part, um, you y'all know, had the conversation at the Unashamed conference. <sighs> your your research a game few, is crazy. I just remember that's this crazy. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember this stuff. Right, right. You know, but, so so I've chosen to to, to deal with it behind behind yeah. closed doors, right? So so me and Lecrae have been in dialogue this whole time. We we've, we've been in. Fairly regular dialogue. And y'all go, this is the thing, though. Yeah, yeah. For people that may not have been with you the whole journey, y'all go back a long way. Like, y'all have songs together. That's right. You know That's what right. I mean? Like, y'all go back a, a ways, bro. Bro, Le- Lecrae, Lecrae was on the original Jesus is Alive. That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> he was doing the ad libs on the hook. <laughs> right, right. What right. up, Shaq? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, we like, I, I remember meeting Lecrae at the Cross Movement offices in Philly. It had to be 05. Wow. So it was like right around the time that Real Talk came okay. out was when we okay. met. You know okay. what I'm saying? Um, and so so whenever, there, whenever there's been something questionable, things that I've seen, the first thing I'm doing is I'm picking up the phone and I'm like, bruh, what are you doing? What's, going What's on? happening right now? Explain this to me because this is what it looks like. Um, and, and so, yeah, we've had those conversations. There's been, there's been group texts where like, a who's who of Christian hip hop on different sides of the mm-hmm. of the table have come together. We had a, a epic months long group text, you know what I'm saying, back in 2014, I want to say, and 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 it was really in that text where it was just like, okay, we like we disagree, you know what I'm saying. But but publicly, it's always been, you know what, I'm not, I'm I, I always felt like it would be more detrimental than helpful, depending on what I said, you know what I'm saying. Sure. Um, but I feel like at this point, brother. I was gonna say why now? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I feel like we've gotten to a point where um, it's it, it's important to to speak the truth openly and plainly in love. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, and because what's happened is I think that group of people who have been confused. I think there's still a, a good amount of confusion yeah. there. But but in the again, there's been a vacuum of silence where nobody's really said anything. So it's like, well, I guess I guess maybe it's I guess maybe it's okay. Um, and I'm. I'm coming, and, and, this, and this is actually, this is my first opportunity like to do an album that wasn't a concept album yeah. since the shift happened, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And so it's like, okay, well, what am I talk about? Well, I'm going to talk about what's happened, the shift that's happened in Christian hip-hop, and so that's, that's what I'm doing on the album. Yeah, I mean, you actually, um, and I'm sorry I can't remember the name of the song. It's track number eight. I felt like on that song, it was almost like a call for 
a lot of us to come back to the first love. Mm. You know, almost mm. like a like yo, like like we can we can we can we can we can come back in, man. Mm. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean that's that's really been so if you look at church history, that's been the pattern, right? You look at history in the Bible and in church history, what you see is this pattern of the people of God kind of falling away, God calling the people of God back to himself, and there being this period of, um, you know, God glorifying, um, God exalting, the returning to the word of God that happens. And then over time, for whatever reason, they be- comes a shift it becomes yeah. a drift right the yeah. people of god begin to drift away and then god has to call them back to himself you know what i'm saying and yeah. then the cycle continues um and so so in one sense this is not surprising like if you look at the history of the church like this is what happened so think even think about the history of christian hip-hop where we are in christian hip-hop right now is only where christian hip-hop was about 20 years ago mm. right so in the mid 90s the e- exact same, same conversations, yo. Yeah. Exact same thing. It was just yeah. different faces, different yeah. people. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah. and then God raised up some cats and kind of put it down. And then there's been, in my opinion, there's just been this drift and this move away. Um, and so I'm actually hopeful. That's basically that's basically yeah. when Cross Movement came on the scene. That's right. They that's were the right. cats that got raised up. That's right. That's right. They were the cats that got raised up. Yeah. Yeah. I was. I was. Um. I was. I was. Uh, I was talking to Chris Broussard about this. Mm. Right. Mm. He's been listening to Christian rap a really long, like, bro. Oh, word? Bro, if you ever get a chance, uh. a long time. Okay. And he was telling me that even before um, before Cross Movement, you had a lot of charismatic and Pentecostal mm. artists. Mm. But you also had, there was a stream of consciousness as well. Mm-hmm. There's guys talking about police brutality mm. and some of those different mm. things. And mm-hmm. I will say, one of the things that I am glad has been talked about a bit more during this period of time mm-hmm. is a lot of this stuff that we're seeing with social justice, yeah. police brutality, mm-hmm. and those types of things, man. And I, I will, I will love your thoughts on that, bro. Yeah, I agree. I, so I, I agree with that, man. I, th- I think that I think it's dope. I think it's dope that cats who are coming from environments where police brutality and racism is a daily reality Man, bro. so i'm i'm one of the dudes yeah. from that you know what i'm saying context yeah. um i think i think it's dope that yeah like these things need to be talked about you yeah. know what i'm saying um so so w- whatever anybody hears me saying like please don't hear me saying that that i think that that's a bad thing like sure. I've, so to me it's 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 not either or it's it's both like Let's let's talk about the gospel and then let's talk about the implications of the gospel. Let's like let's do both. You Boom. know what I'm saying? So um, but yeah, that's that's something that's real. That's just real close. Like as a as a black man growing up in 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 the city, Philly, you know what I'm saying? And and even just my own challenging interactions with the police, you know what I'm saying? Like that's yeah, that's real near and dear to my heart. So every time I see a uh, uh, Philando, um, every, every time I see these 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 instances uh, Sandra Bland like these different cases it's like yo yo that could definitely be me right that could definitely be my aunt you know what I'm saying like that could be my cousin that could be my nephew you know what I'm saying that could be my son I got two I got two sons now yeah. you know what I'm saying um and so um I, I think I think one of the weaknesses of and I'll, I'll say I'll say the <laughs> conservative reformed white evangelical churches I think one of one of the weaknesses there has been lack of engagement wow. when it comes to issues of racial injustice. Wow. And, and, and there's, there's a history there that goes all the way back to slavery, right? Yeah. So back in the days of slavery, there were people who were saying, we shouldn't get involved in the abolitionist uh, movement because we just need to preach the gospel. Yep. Meanwhile, people are in chains, right? Yep. You, you fast forward to Jim Crow era. Same thing. We don't need to get involved in that. We just need to preach the gospel. Civil rights movement. We don't need to get the people in the civil rights movement. They're liberal. We just need to preach the gospel. Right. So you see this through line. But but what do you see all the way through is often it's the churches that connect theologically with with reform theology. Yep. So it's like these reform churches yep. like are are the ones that are like like dissing the the. Or, or it's silent in the face of the oppression of black people. Yeah. Um, and so I think one of the things that w- what God has done 
um, recently is is that he's brought in more minorities into those spaces. Was, that, that was going. That was going to be my next question. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, you know, Lecrae actually said it in the interview he and I did at Just Gospel, ironically, of that period of time, that young and unashamed period of time. You guys were a big part of the reason why a lot of minorities came in. I mean, you guys mm, came mm. in, cross movement brought a wave, mm. but it was like when like that period of time when it was like cross movement, mm. Lantmo and Reach yeah. going simultaneous, bro, yeah. it was a flood. That's right. That's right. <laughs> like, That's right. That's it right. It was like a flood. Yeah. You know, and 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 I think that has helped shaped shape some of this dialogue. Yeah. But at the same time, there's still a lot of still a lot of areas where this is lacking that's right that's right you yeah it, it, i think i think an influx w was brought in and it was just like okay you got these like young young believers yeah. who are embracing reform theology and in these in these majority culture white evangelical spaces and that and now the challenge becomes okay now we got to live together we here right? now we here we now we here, like, here we now. in the building yeah. we in the building yeah. you know what i'm saying so yeah. So, so it's it, it's it has to be. And we've been here like ten years now. We, 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 we've, been, we've been here for you. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like we are, we we in here. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. and so it's like, okay, it's it's one thing for us to agree on on the doctrine of the atonement and amen. Like sure. that's that's the most important thing. Let's keep the main thing the main thing. But now, as we begin to interact, you get to see that, like, yes, I'm a Christian and. I'm also I'm a black man. I'm a young yeah, black bro. man in America. Yeah, bro. And and that and there's there's realities that come with that that if we're in a relationship, you're going to need to embrace my realities, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And not and not just kind of kind of shun it off, you know what I'm saying? I think and I think that's one of the one of the challenges of social media. So I think social media has actually been a hindrance in this regard in that um, these issues are generally speaking going to be dealt with through relationships. Mm. You know what I'm saying? As we as we sit down at the dinner table, as you meet my wife, as you meet my sons, you know what I'm saying? So it's no longer as easy to say that guy was just a thug, right? The 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 person who was killed by the police officer was just a thug because now you're thinking about wait a minute. Shy son Sage. Yep. That could have been him. He's yep. around his age. You know yep. what I'm saying? You you can identify. Yep. But the f the more distance we are from each other, the less proximity there is, the less empathy there is. You know what I'm saying? And and empathy is going to come through relationships. And so that's that's what we're that's what we're hoping for. Like like ultimately is that um, as one that ch that churches like Risen Christ and others like Cornerstone in Atlanta, yep. the Gate in St. Louis, yep. and that's and that's the other thing. Let yep. me just I'm on a, I'm on a yeah, little tangent right right now, but let me just say this: one of the dope things about that influx has been church plants, bro. Church plants, church bruh. plants bro. Yeah. Inner yeah. city, yep. often multi-ethnic yep. yep. <laughs> church yep. plants. You yep. know what I'm saying? And yep. and we and we're just starting to see the fruit of that and i think that's going to bear fruit for years to come man i told i told i've told i've told ambassador this before and wells and fanatic and, and life i've told all of them um and we were even talking about that legacy last year i said bro like one of the lasting legacies that you guys are always going to have is all of these people that have started planting churches that was birthed out of y'all's ministry in That's some right. kind of way. Like some are artists, some people was just around, some people was going to shows, mm -hmm. some whatever it was, mm -hmm. but it was like the 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 influence that y'all had on so many of us. And then some of us like I'm not in church planting, mm -hmm. but I'm in leadership at my church, mm -hmm. discipling kids every week. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it's like a lot of that goes back to the things that when mm -hmm. I was first coming into the faith that I was being taught through the music. Yes, sir. And I was having conversations with brothers like you mm. and Jason and others behind the scenes. Yes. And it I mean, bro, that's Bruh. That's bananas. You 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 can't even you can't even begin to calculate. You can't, bro. Like the fruit you of that, yo. You can't. Yeah. You can't. Cause because then it, you start looking at how many people have come through those churches, yeah. how many people how many people in those respective communities, through outreaches and other things, those churches have touched. Mm. Now you got all this media, yeah. all these churches got podcasts, right. people listening to come on, man. Yeah. Come yeah. on, bro. Crazy. That's legacy, Crazy. man. You know what I'm saying? That's legacy. You know what I'm saying? And and that's that's why I'm like, it gets me back to the best use of it, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's what's the best yeah. way to use it? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because I'm just like, man, at the end of the day, like, like 20, 30 years from now, like, we all going to be gone, right? Yeah. What's Like, what's going to be standing? What's going to remain? You know what I'm saying? What's, what's going to endure? Bro, I had this thought a few years ago. 
what will be the legacy from this period of time? Mm. Like when we look back 10 years, 15 years, mm. what will we say came out of this period of yes. time? You know what I mean? Yes. And it's like we, especially those of us that I think have been doing this music for a while. Mm-hmm. Like you, you like you got to you got to think about that. Like mm. we think about the legacy for our kids and our families, and mm. you know. And I want to talk to you about family, yeah, in, in in a minute. But we think about those things, bro. We got to think about legacies of our ministries. Mm. And so, even if you don't want to call it a ministry, right? And you just, what's the legacy of your art? Mm. What legacy are you looking to? What are we? What are we looking to leave people? Mm. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Absolutely, Absolutely, man. That that's yeah. That's that's something that's heavy on my heart. Yeah. So, um. Now that you have a family, you got three kids, you're pastoring the church. Um, you know, one one of the things that, um, and I think it's just been a reality for African Americans for a long time, bro, is the black family being mm. under attack. Mm. And and not even I don't even, I shouldn't even just say African Americans, bro, because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think Hispanics go through a lot mm-hmm. of this in a, in a different way. Mm-hmm. And I think even when you go out to the suburbs, even with um, with with white people, yeah, poor whites, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, yeah. and even with poor whites, bro. Yeah. Like yeah. the family structure, and you seeing how many kids now are being born one parent households mm. and that kind of thing, and mm. you know what I mean. Like just man, just just some of your thoughts on this as a as a pastor, as a family man, mm. as an artist, as a minister. Mm-hmm. Just just looking at this man and and where we are in 2017 with respect to that. Yeah, man, it's 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 an epidemic, right? So fatherlessness, yep. is an epidemic, right? Um, so I know I know where I'm from. It's it's rare. Like I I, can, I think about my peoples who I grew up with. Like the the households that had both parents in them was was rare. You know that was the exception, not the rule. You know what I'm saying? Um, let alone two godly parents. Yep. So I'm just talking about just two parents. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, but but to have two believing parents in the home. Um, I, I, I can't recall ever seeing that, me, me growing up, right? Um, and, and when you think about the, when you think about the breakdown of, of the black family in particular, that had, that's also rooted in slavery, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, and oppression and, and, and in governmental policies over the years, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's something that continues to be perpetuated. And, and one of the things, one of the beauties of, of the gospel, and, and which has been just really dope to see, is, is how the, the, the implications of the gospel in bringing the family back together. You know what I'm saying? Because what do you see? When you see cats, they come to the faith, they see, they begin to see, okay, I was wilding. I was wilding when I was in the world. This is not how God wants me to be. Well, how does God want me to be? We open up to, to Ephesians 5 and we see, okay, like husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. And so, so you have cats who are thinking about marriage who before marriage would have never even been on yeah. the table, right? Yeah. So I know, again, for me, it was just like marriage. Like, that, that, I didn't even, I mean, may, maybe when I'm in my 40s or something, possibly, yeah. but yeah. Why, why, why narrow myself down, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, but now, like, with the Bible now, we have a, we have a Christian ethic that says, nah, like, like, you need to take a wife, you know what I'm saying? You need to become responsible. You need to lead your home. You need to lead your family, you know what I'm saying? And so, so, so what's happened is through the gospel, we're starting to see cats in urban environments getting married, having families, entering into leadership in their, in their churches, in their homes, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And it's just, yeah. that's, a, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that the, that the solution to the breakdown of the, of the family in general and the black family in particular is, is the gospel and, and, and back, the implications of the gospel, man. Yeah, our, my, the, 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 the church that, um, that I attend and serve at, our mission statement, Bringing families out of crisis and leading them around the word of God. Mm. You know what I mean? Like mm. that's the beginning of the mission statement. Mm. And so, um, you know, I knew this was like something you were you were yeah. kind of passionate about and wanted to hit on. And, and you know, just thinking about that. And, I, bro, I was – and this is no lie, man. It, it's, it's a couple kids from my church that I'm discipling. They may be mm. watching this. So what's up, y'all? But, and mm. and we, we were talking yesterday um, in my car, and I – Brought them in my home because mm. I wanted to give one of them a book, mm. and so they were asking me about my wife. Mm. And how old were they? How old are the kids? One sixteen, one's eight, mm. and they live with their grandmother. Mm-hmm. So, like a wife is like it's like a foreign thing. What is that? Yeah, so they yeah. they're asking me, and I'm I'm trying to explain it to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? As, yeah. as best I can, and it, it's it reminded me like 
one, you got to be ready for that question. Mm. <laughs> right, 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 right. But, but, but secondly, this is such an ec- epidemic mm. that for some people, the concept of a wife or a husband mm. is so foreign, and we take it as... Right. You know what like I mean? Like normal. Yeah, 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 bro. Bruh, like that's... So which, which so that that may be a small moment in your mind. Yeah. To Huge. him, to that Massive. 16 year old, Massive. to that eight year old, that's Massive. that's that's invaluable. Massive. For him to see a black man yeah. coming into his home, yeah. talking about your wife. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that that may be the first time they've ever experienced that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's and and that that reminds me of just the importance of models. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Of modeling yep. things. And um, you know, when So one of the things that we do in our home is every night we have dinner together. So so when I get back from from work, no matter what, no matter what, like unless it's an emergency or something crazy happens, we're having dinner at the table. And and just the value of that for the consistency of that for Mm -hmm. a child. But then one of the things we also do is after dinner each night, we have family worship. Wow. Right. So so we and it's real simple. We open up the Bible. We're going through Proverbs now. I have my five-year-old son. He'll read one of the Proverbs, and then I'll talk about it a little bit. We'll sing a, sing a song, and then we'll pray. Amen. And that's it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and we do that every single day, yep. right? And w- one of the things that's been really dope has been to bring other people into it, you know what I'm saying? Oh, and just say, man. hey, come, why don't you come have dinner with come my family? Come kick it with us. Yeah. So they come, you know what I'm saying? And, and, they, and they're there for the whole, for that whole thing. That's dope. And so many people have been like, yo, I've never seen that before. That's dope. You know what I'm saying? And so that's, that's the opportunity we have as, as husbands, as fathers, yeah. man, to, to not only be what God has called us to be, but then also to model it for others. Yeah, that's dope, man. That's dope. That's so good, bro. Um, So a couple of things I got to ask you yes, on sir. the lamp mode front. Um, okay. What's the future of Lantmo, bro? <laughs> I'll leave it there. I've heard some things. I'm not going to say what I've heard. So I'll just... Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, so one thing I'll say about Lantmo is that by the grace of God, we have had 15, almost 15 years yeah, of ministry, man. Killing so, it. So we started in 03, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, have, have released, I think, over 60 albums or something, yeah. something like that. And so, so the first thing I would want to do is I just want to give thanks to the Lord for his faithfulness towards us and, and allowing us to be able to do what we've done for the last 15 years. Yep. At the same time, I'll also say that um, brothers are getting older, brothers have families, some brothers are in pastoral ministry, some brothers, you know, so, so life is happening. Um, and, and we've never wanted to continue to do something just to continue to do it you know sure. what i'm saying so we've always felt like man if there's ever a point where there needs to be kind of a clear cut off and we say you know what we're going to close the doors and we're going to go out on a celebratory note then that's what we wanted to do you know what i'm saying and so we're moving in that direction um and there'll be more information coming out about that soon um but yeah i think i think it's at the point where brothers are beginning to move on into other uh, other phases the next phases of their lives um and um and so yeah there'll be more information coming out about that i feel that brother i feel that what about for you for the, for the rest of this year because because i'm i'm seeing with you back in yeah. in the music game the <laughs> yeah, way yeah, you yeah, back yeah. in man hey hey yo i'm back but nobody yeah. was asking where yeah. i've been yo man it's so I, I feel like I got a second win under me. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I feel like I got you a... Feel re, you, you, I, I you feel rejuvenated re, way yeah. though, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I feel rejuvenated, you, you rejuvenated like baby. You definitely sound like it, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like so, so, so for me, so I'm not, I'm not done. I got, I got, I got a couple more, couple more things I want to say. So you still are, are we are we still want to get the lyrical theology three? Yes, sir. That's, so that's that's still in the works. So okay. that's definitely the plans for that for next year for eighteen. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, so LT3. so so no more three years in between. This no, is no 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 no. no, no. <laughs> it's, it's a new day. It's a new day, way though. <laughs> Things moving too fast these days. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. <laughs> so and, and and so last question: Do you plan to hit the road some this year? Because I'm I'm, I'm sure mm. I'm sure there are a multitude, mm. uh, at least seven thousand <laughs> of Charlotte fans. Mm. That that that, that want to come out and yeah yeah so that's the plan y'all yeah the plan is once once the album drops uh, we're setting up uh, dates now um, you can do that through Lamp Mode and yeah man looking to looking to get out and uh, touch touch the brothers and sisters and and hear from them and see see what the Lord's doing and it's still Jesus man amen God I'm I'm, amen. I'm trying to wave that flag amen. everywhere I go man amen amen encouraging man mm. love you brother Yo. and thank you thank you so much for coming through thank man. you for having me brother yeah. it's it's my pleasure. Absolutely. Wait a wait a radio. radio.